My name's Peter Ellis. I'm the principal of the British Offshore Sailing School here at MDL's Hamble Point Marina. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about sailing in heavy weather conditions. The sort of sailing conditions that you either choose you don't want to go out and sail in or you find yourself in that situation where the wind's picking up and you feel a little bit overpressed and a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So we're going to look at some of the things that you can do to prepare for that and what to do if the worst goes wrong and you need to call on emergency services or you have some kind of emergency situation on board. Now when you plan to go out sailing, the key element of all good sailing and trouble free sailing is to spend time before you go out carrying out all your preparation and planning beforehand. So things like the tides in terms of tidal heights and tidal streams and with particular note that at various times when the weather conditions change for a given place those conditions may change so for example if you've got low water over a bar you might find that the wind will make the water much much rougher than normal similarly a strong tidal stream running uh, through a tidal race will make it very very rough and might you might find that that's quite taxing conditions presented to you so it's really important to carry out good planning and preparation before you go out on your passage and also prepare some form of a passage plan. Obtaining up-to-date weather information is absolutely vital before setting out. Today there's a plethora of sources of weather information on the internet and there's almost an infinite number of websites that will give you information. But you can always rely on the national uh, weather forecasting uh, services that are available so in the UK that's the meteorological office and in France that would be Meteo France and around the world each nation has its own dedicated weather forecasting service. When you tune into those weather forecasting services you can also gain access to synoptics or weather charts these give you a visual representation of what the weather and most importantly what the wind is going to be doing on those visual representations, you'll th see things like isobars, which are lines which join points of equal pressure and indicate where low pressure and high pressure centers exist. Also, it will indicate where the fronts are. The fronts are really important because if a cold front goes through, it's likely that the wind will increase and the wind direction will probably change. These are all really important factors when planning your passage out. Having taken into account all the weather information before you depart, it's really important that you obtain updated weather forecasts whilst you're on passage. Not always so easy to do when you're at sea. However, the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency issue on a regular basis throughout the, throughout the UK maritime safety information broadcasts. And those are regularly broadcast and will contain information about weather forecasts, strong wind warnings, gale warnings as well as navigational warnings, significant things like a buoy that might be off station, all good things that will help you on your passage. So having said that pre-planning is important, obviously preparation of the boat is really important too. One of the things that you can do is register your boat on the RYA Safe Tracks database. Now that's a database that can be accessed by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency and rescue services in the event that you do have a problem. The database itself can either be set to track your position or you can give, it can give regular updates and you can set it up so that your shoreside contact would be given uh, uh, an email or would be contacted should you not make your destination at the time that you've entered. So it's a good safe scheme and really worth in getting involved with. Whether you choose to deliberately go out in heavy weather or it's something you find yourself in and you didn't really want to be, it's vital that your boat is very well maintained and it's in a seaworthy condition. It's never just one little thing going wrong that causes a problem when you're out sailing. It's generally speaking a number of smaller issues. Maybe that seacock that you didn't get round to servicing that's got a bit of a leak on it suddenly fails or maybe the, the, uh, the gas is not working. All of those little things can make your sailing much, much more enjoyable. And there's nothing like a bit of heavy weather to test the boat and the crew. Remember, it's the responsibility of the skipper to make sure that his crew are thoroughly prepared. 
Now with that in mind, it's a really good idea to have a look at things like, have they got the right clothing and equipment on board? So things like making sure that people have got adequate wet weather gear, which have got storm cuffs that they're gonna do up at the neck, maybe have a neck scarf because you're gonna get waves over the deck. Things of that nature are really, really key. An uncomfortable crew is one that's not gonna perform particularly well. Find out if people tend to get seasick. There's nothing more than heavy weather that's gonna bring about a bout of seasickness and lay up some of your crew. All of a sudden you've gone from having five crew down to one. So bear that in mind as well. In terms of personal safety equipment, make sure that the life jackets are, are, are in date, that they've been serviced recently, and that you have every crew member has a lifeline, which they can wear, they can clip on around the boat to in order, in order to make sure that if they do become unsteady on deck, there's less chance that they're actually gonna fall over the side. Located around the boats, there should be jack stays so that you can allow crew to go forwards and do work on deck without being unclipped so that they can be clipped on at all times. Your crew should also be aware of what you expect them to do in the event of an emergency. If, you're in, if you are in a situation where you have to summon assistance, do they know how the VHF radio works? Do they know how to activate the digital selective calling so they can put out a DSC alert and summon assistance? Do they know how an EPIRB works? An emergency position radio indicating beacon. Something you can use to notify the, the search and rescue services of your location. Also, handheld radios are useful. Do they know how to use a handheld radio on deck? Other things you can consider covering before you even leave the dock are things like going out and practicing man overboards or talking through a man overboard procedure. What to do in the event of a fire? Where are the fire extinguishers located? And also what happens if you get a medical emergency? What do you expect your crew to do? Other things that you should make sure of uh, their validity and uh, make sure they haven't gone past their expiry date are your life raft, the grab bag, and of course, if you need to summon, assist summon assistance, you may well need to use pyrotechnics or flares. Some of my most memorable and enjoyable sailing trips have been in heavy weather. And it just goes to show that with good preparation and planning of both the boat and the crew, you can carry out passages in strong winds in a very, very safe way, providing you've got all the bases covered. Also, it's really important to have the confidence in what to do should things go wrong. That knowledge will enable you to act quickly in the event of an emergency and will enable your crew to do the right thing at the right time.